Okay, so I have this gridded whiteboard that will help me draw accurate uh, ray diagram, unlike in the chapter 17 exercises video. Uh, let me first write down the ray tracing rules as a reminder. There are three rules, one rule redundant, so I'm just going to write down the first two that I'm actually going to use. Okay, so here are the two ray tracing rules. The first principal ray, uh, first principal ray is incident on lens parallel to axis and exits to go through focal point. Second rule, second principal ray is incident on middle of lens and exit undeflected. Those are the ray tracing rules and I'll be applying them for three different situations. So the first situation is converging lens with real image. All right, let me first draw a representation of the lens and the representation of axis and I will mark the focal point. I place the focal point on both sides. The focal point on the incoming side that helps me see where the object is relative to the focal length. So I'm going to place my object. I will do it at the same distance as where I did it for chapter 17 exercises. I will place it at twice the focal length. Okay, now I'm all set up to uh, trace my rays and see where the image forms. So let me draw my first principal ray. From the tip of the arrow, it comes in parallel to the axis, incident on the lens. Once it goes through the lens, then it bends in such a way that it goes through the focal point. So let me draw that as well as I can. Okay, that's the first principal ray. The second principal ray, once again, from the tip of the arrow, it goes through the middle of the lens. And it goes through in such a way that it's undeflected. You see where these rays cross each other. So this point here is where the tip of the arrow would form a focus. Now you can imagine doing the same thing for the rest of the arrow and when you do that, this is what you end up with. All right, so that's the ray tracing. Let me try to describe where some of those formulas come from. In particular, the lens equation that you have seen before. So the lens equation was 1 over object distance plus 1 over image distance is equal to 1 over the focal length. I just realized if I try to drive it, it'll probably involve more math than I should. But let me illustrate the aspects of geometry where it does come from. So let me first label all the distances. So this is the object distance. This is the image distance. And as a reminder, this is the focal length. So, in trying to derive the lens equation, these three triangles are going to be useful. The triangle involving the object distance and the triangle involving the focal length and the triangle involving the image distance. These triangles involve some common features. The triangles involving the object distance, it is a similar triangle to the triangle involving the image distance. They share the same angle. Now, in this picture, they happen to be congruent triangles. In general, they won't be, but they are similar triangles. The triangle involving the object distance and the triangle involving the focal length, they share one common feature, the height of the triangle. So it's the height of the object and well the height of the object. It came in the ray came in parallel. Oh and we need one more label for the height of the image. 
Now, given the relationship between these triangles, you can come up with the relationship between the object distance, the image distance, and the focal length. And the result of that is the lens equation. All right, now one more equation that I want you to explain is the magnification exp uh, equation. You guys have seen in the chapter 17 exercises videos that lateral magnification is equal to minus image distance divided by object distance. Now, you might wonder where that's coming from. Now, the magnification itself is actually defined as the image height divided by object height. That's the definition. I hope it makes sense. Um, the magnification is the ratio of the image height to object height. So large image height means large magnification. Now, so the goal is to go from this relationship on the left to this relationship on the right. And that comes from these uh, triangles that we have been uh, pointing out. Look at the triangle involving the object distance and the triangle involving the image distance. They are similar triangles, meaning the ratio of these two sides, the two, two legs here, is going to be equal to the ratio of these two legs here, because those are the corresponding sides in the similar triangle. Now, you might ask, where is this minus sign coming from? It's because when you draw this ray diagram, you realize that the image is inverted. So the minus sign is introduced here to indicate that image, yes, it flips over. Good. So that's the detailed ray diagram with the ray tracing rules and some explanation of where the formulas come from. Now, I'd like to repeat this for the other two examples that you have seen. Um, I won't quite um, go through the connection with the formulas again, but I just want you to see how those virtual images get produced. Okay. Let me prepare the second page. So I have my ray tracing rules as before. It's going to be the same converging lens, but instead of real image, it'll be with the virtual image. So as you saw before, how we do that is by changing the object distance. Instead of the object being placed farther away than the focal point, it's going to be placed so that it's closer than the focal point. This is probably a good point. Let me place my object here and let me follow the ray tracing rule. Here's the first ray, incident parallel to the axis. And after going through the lens, it bends in such a way that it goes through the focal point. Here's my second ray. It goes through the middle of the lens and it doesn't bend. It go, exits undeflected. Now, as you look at this right side of the diagram, I hope you realize that these rays are never going to come together. If I want these rays to intersect, I need to follow them backward, trace them back, them back here, and hope they meet on the left-hand side. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, to make it clear, these rays are not actually going through these points here. Um, on the left hand side. So I'm going to draw them with a dotted line. Uh, let me start from here so that I can be sure to follow along the same line. So this is the direction that principal ray number one appears to come from. And this is the direction that the principal ray two appears to come from. Now you see that these two rays do meet at a point here. So that's the point where this, uh, these rays are going to be appearing to come from. And that's where our image will be. So here's the image. And once again, it's a virtual image because the light rays do not actually go through this point. They just appear to come from that point. 
the formulas that we were using before, they continue to work. So the algebra is pretty simple. Okay, let me show you your uh, third example uh, where you get virtual image with a diverging lens. Okay, let me prepare my page. It's not going to be converging lens. It will be diverging lens. And let me replace this picture of converging lens with a diverging lens. All right, it's not a perfect drawing, but it will have to work for now. Okay, let me place my object. Let me place it in a slightly different location than where I placed it last time. Let me place it tw at twice the focal length. As a reminder, with a diverging lens, focal length is negative. So I might mark it here as minus f, just as a reminder that I have negative focal length. All right, and let me place my object. Now, as we draw our rays, I hope you realize that we have to change our rules a little bit because if you follow the exact same rules as last time, then of course we're going to get the exact same thing. So diverging lens, the difference is that it diverges. So the second principal ray actually won't change because before it didn't deflect, so it will continue to not deflect. It's the first principal ray that will change. Before, after being incident on the lens parallel, it deflected in such a way that it goes through the focal point on the outgoing side. This time, it's going to deflect in such a way that it's going to look like it appears to come from focal point on the incoming side. So let me draw one helpful figure. It's this line of sight from the focal point on the incoming side to the, um, to the point where the first principal ray is crossing the lens. Uh, let me extend this out a little bit further so that I can use this as a guide. Now this is a dotted line because the ray is not actually following along this entire line. There's one portion of the line that it, the actual ray follows. It's this portion that I'm tracing right now. Good. So that's the first principal ray. Let me draw the second principal ray. It's drawn the same as, as before. Goes through the center of the lens, undeflected. Now, you see this point where these rays appear to cross. That's where the image forms. So. Let me label the object and image distances. This is the object distance. It's still positive. And this is the image distance. And in terms of the numbers that we plug into lens equation, this image distance that we plug into lens equation, 1 over O plus 1 over I is equal to 1 over f. This number i, image distance that we would plug in, is negative. It's because this image is on the left hand side. In other words, the, the side of incoming light. It's in the opposite side from where it should be. So this uh, distance on the left hand side is considered to be negative. And that makes this equation come out right. So that we can use the same equation both for converging lens with a real image, converging lens with a virtual image, and diverging lens with a virtual image. As long as we remember that this focal length here, it will be a negative focal length. That, so that's the explanation of the formulas, ray tracing rules, and why the um, images form where they form. Now, when you draw these ray diagrams, you can clearly see when the image is upside down, that was with a converging lens with a real image, or when the image is right side up, that was both converging and diverging lens with a virtual image. Now, in this class, we will only deal with a single lens setup, so I think that's as good as we will cover it. But it can get more complicated when you have multiple lens setups, but we would still continue to follow these rules. 
The only thing that changes with the multiple lens setup is that you chain these rules together. You handle the first lens and you use the image of the first lens as the object of the next lens and so on. So that's it. Um, good luck studying for the exam. As usual, email me, message me if you have any questions and I will see you all at the exam. Bye.